Hi again. In the last video, we took a look at the mounting brackets for the servo motors. These guys right here. And then we took a look at the kickstands, which are more like pneumatic or hydraulic rams. Unfortunately, I was left kind of stumped at the end of the video. I wasn't really sure how to handle them, but I thought about it a little bit, and I think I have an idea. It involves a cylinder. If we were to take a cylinder on the x-axis, let's say it probably is like a half inch shaft, so 0.25 inch radius, around uh, three feet wide or so to start, and we placed it roughly where we want our rams to pivot. Turns out there's actually a really good spot for that to be right there. What this means is it can pass between the engine and the frame, right? There can be like a bearing here of some sort mounted on the inside of the frame holding it. We don't need to show that, but that's how it might work. And let's do 16 segments. Yeah, let's go with 12. 12 always seems to work for me. And we can make it so that they just protrude. The idea is that this could be mounted to another hydraulic system or a motor actuator. And these rams would then be, would then pivot on this shaft as it turns. I always like to have a plan of how it actually would work if we were to build one. So that's why I'm sort of dwelling on this and thinking, okay, well, how would it actually work? How would we actually build one of these things? And this is what I've come up with. I'm going to offer my disclaimer yet again. I am not an engineer. I don't even play one on TV. And I'm not sure if this would work. But I feel like it's an okay direction to go. We can extend that a little bit. And maybe that's the mounting point for the hydraulic ram. Maybe another ram lives here along the frame that actually has the ability to push and pull rotating this, you know, the 180 degrees or so, or the 90 degrees it needs to rotate. So with that in mind, let's build this thing. The cylinder has now become our kickstand pivot and the kickstands live inside of it. So when we actuate our kickstand pivot, our kickstands lift up. Let's check our lean angle of our machine. How much lean can this machine get away with while in pursuit? Oh, that's plenty, 45 degrees. I'd like to see that. So the end, the, the the uh, the result of that test is basically showing us that if the Razorback were in pursuit and it had to pull a really hard turn, it would be able to pull it off. So let's just pick up where we left off then. We need to mount these rams to this pivot, to this shaft. So let's make the shaft stick out a little bit more, just exaggerate it for now. And let's create a cylinder, yet another cylinder. We can just copy this cylinder, delete all of the children we brought along with it, and make it a little fatter, but a lot narrower. And it would probably be surface mounted like that. So, as a viewer looking from the side, you might see a hydraulic ram mounted to a large disc it sits on the outside of the bike. And this would be sort of where the swing arm pivot normally is, maybe above it a little bit. And we can then create a bracket that holds the kickstand. Let's thicken the cylinder up a little bit, like that. 
And let's start to build it. Okay. So the top of the RAM would sit right there. We've had hoses and cablings coming off cabling coming off of it. And there would be some sort of a uh, clamp system holding it in place. So I think we're probably going to spend the rest of this video making that because it needs to look really good because look at how exposed it is. I'm thinking it's probably going to... Let's, let's see if I can use the doodle tool. I've never used it. Okay, let's just try this. So it would probably hook over it like this. The cylinder, we'd have to make it come down, probably arc it, give it sort of a Maltese cross look. And then we'll have another band going over here. These bands could have, um, maybe they have bolts on either side holding it down. That way, when the daemons, machines, inevit in inevitably destroy one of these rams, um, the human servants can sort of just uh, loosen those four bolts disconnect the hoses and replace it with a new RAM because these are outboard things they're they're gonna come in contact with curbs the street maybe other vehicles so it's pretty important that they stay put and what happens if I rotate no oh, lost it okay so we have a doodle object here I guess the doodle object is kind of fun for mocking up things like this but I don't need it great so let's get started on that First thing I like to do in this situation is clean the cylinder up a bit. I'm not sure how many times I've done this to a cylinder before in these screencasts, but in Cinema 4D, when you make a cylinder editable, something weird happens. You realize the cap isn't actually connected to the sides. And that's bad news for when you want to extrude the sides and move it around, because you get stuff like that, and that just doesn't work. The fix is to select everything and run the optimize command. As long as you're optimizing polygons and points, these polygons and points are pretty much at the same spot. So when you hit OK, they are now optimized. Sort of just merges any vertices that are close enough. Now, we need to extend this downwards. Let's do that from the side view. How about we grab that number of faces? And in R13, you can just control drag, and it's almost like a poor man's extrude. We can then scale it down, flatten these things out. We're going to have to tweak it, so it's OK. And we bring it down to there. now has some direction. Is this going to work on this side? Oh, I hope the shock unit doesn't get in the way again. <laughs> How many times are we going to have to move this thing? Okay, let's see if let's see if it could theoretically survive if it was a little bit higher. Yeah, I think so. I don't see why it couldn't be up here instead. We haven't even connected it yet. Okay, so the cylinder we're working with right now is a child of the kickstand pivot. Let's make it a child of the actual kickstand's object. This is where that null object comes in handy so that we can see it on both sides. Okay, so is beginning to look a bit weird so let's clean it up probably want our edges in line with the hydraulic ram itself like that and I think it needs to go down a little bit more so let's switch this axis to normal so it takes the average of its normals when we try to move it and that way we can scale it down along its normal 
just move it out a little bit more. Cool. So next step would be to make it so that it actually fits the angle we're going to be working with. And this brings up an interesting question. Do we need a little bit of a transition? I think yes. So let's switch to our knife tool. Loop mode. And let's add a transition right there. To make the transition a bit more interesting, we can select the edges on the, well, on the edges, <laughs> and move them down like that. Cool. It still has this, like, coach's whistle sort of look, and I don't like that. So I'm going to just try to make the edge a little bit more concave and see if that helps. Yeah, it helps a little bit. Let's go back to our polygons. And now we can move them up and the transition here is a little bit more controlled. And that's good. Okay. Let's move this row of edges out like that. And just so it doesn't look weird, let's grab the points on either end. So <laughs> everything I'm doing at this point is completely uh, random. I'm just kind of doing what I think looks good. Right here, I skewed the geometry. I didn't actually bend it, so this edge is still parallel with this edge, and that doesn't look very realistic. It would look better if we switch this axis back to axis, and it would probably look better if we made it so it's a little more perpendicular. Looks like it was bent or fabricated that way. Now this looks okay, but we're probably going to have to move the ram forward a little bit, rotate it a little bit, so it's more centered like that. I think it's starting to look okay. Again, completely random and completely cosmetic. The idea is that once we have this bracket made and we clamp the pistons on, we can simply rotate that pivot up by a set amount. And then they're out of the way. And they can be deployed whenever. So let's work on that. This is going to be one of those one of those times where I'm actually going to use the boolean object and we're probably going to drop into a new file just so we can work on this object in peace. Well, maybe not. We we can stay in this file. We'll just hide everything else. So before we do that, let's get our RAM and duplicate the object. We're going to use this because it's it's already in the orientation we need. We can resize this to make the collar that actually holds it in place. I think there should be one here. And another one closer to the top. But we don't want it to block the supply line. So it would probably be there. Mm, I think that looks like looks like it would work. One, two, one, eight. All right. We can now take RAM one, RAM two, 
and kickstand pivot, all of which are, have, a, have inherited the wrong name. And we can move them out. So I'm just going to save my file. I'm going to cut, hide the entire Razorback object, and then paste. So now we can work on this object in peace. So let's start doing some virtual milling. Let's make an instance of RAM 1. Move it over to where RAM 2 is so we don't have to do too much work. We can now take this object and I think it has enough geometry so let's make it editable. Select all, UO for optimize, at least on my setup. So it's like that. Now we can take all of these sides scale them down move them into the geometry widen them out so they look like they're flared down a little bit starting to look like a mountain mounting bracket And we're going to use the evil, evil Boolean operation. A lot of people don't like Booleans, and for good reason. But I think, as long as you clean up after yourself, they're okay to use. And let's jump into that. The idea is that we want to combine these objects. So before we do a Boolean operation on them, there's something I see that's troublesome already. We've got a row of edges intersecting right where this uh, this eyelet is going to cut into this object. So let's move that. We just use our slide tool. Don't know where it is. There it is. Move that edge up. It's out of the way. Now it can actually participate in forming the new geometry instead of being a casualty of the old geometry. Now let's just sort of prepare this for the boolean operation that's coming. Okay, so we know that it's going to make new geometry. Let's continue to prepare it. Let's do that by using the knife tool in loop mode. It looks like loop mode may not be the best choice, so let's use line mode. Everything not restricted to a selection. So we're simply going to make a cut through the entire object. One there, and another there. Now we can Boolean. We make that editable, combine it with the other RAM. So we connect objects and delete. So now we just have two objects. Now we can create a Boolean object put them both into it. See the default is that it tries to cut the other object out. But we don't want that. So we can now say boolean type a union b. In other words a with b. We can see that they don't actually touch down here. So let's fix that. This object needs to intersect the other object. Now there are a few options we can play with to make the end result friendlier. First of all, we can make sure high quality is checked. Secondly, we can say create single object. And lastly, we can actually optimize the points based on this threshold. So we can say any points that are this close together in the end result, glue them. Doesn't really work. So we're going to have to do that by hand. But we do have something that's manageable. So we press C and it converts it to an editable object and it gives us our Boolean. First thing we do is clean up. I go to point mode and I basically toggle between selecting a few points and then MQ to weld them. So 
I just hold down Q, select a couple points, release, weld. Hold down, select a couple points, weld. And I'm just going to keep doing that until I've cleaned it up. It's not fun. It's not it's not particularly easy. But this is how you get a good result. Sometimes I see some points are close enough, and I figure, you know what, those points should all be a part of something else. So I'll 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 actually just select all those points and say I want them to all go there. Same thing here. These points are close enough. They should all go there. And it's okay to be a bit greedy here. I think the end result is usually better the greedier you are. So that looks really clean. This looks less clean. There's too much geometry here. We don't actually need this geometry, so we will get rid of that after. It's just all extra. A little fun tip, the mouse wheel controls your selections. If you're clicking and dragging to select, you can roll your mouse wheel and it actually changes the selection in real time. You gotta learn to use the mouse wheel with a middle finger to do that. So we just keep cleaning it up. It's not fun. It's not easy. Usually I get a pretty good result though. Okay, so once you have your edges all going where they need to go, you might realize that you need extra geometry in some places and you now have triangles where you don't want them. So I remove the triangles. You can use our same melt command to get rid of those edges. So let's see. No triangles over there, that's good. But we do have this weird thing happening here. Let's see what's going on. It looks like we have a loop of edges coming up here, but then it terminates. So we can restore that just using the knife tool. Remember to turn visible only back on. And we can just cut across the object. And now we have some triangles that can be converted to quads. And we have a loop. That's a quad. These are all quads. That's another quad. Quad, quad, quad. Here's a triangle we missed. So we can just melt that. Quad, 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 quad. All quads. And people said Booleans were messy. I feel that you just need to take your time and have a plan. And Booleans can be quite pleasant to work with. In this case, it gave us exactly what we wanted. So I'm going to change this to normal mode and flatten it. I'm going to move this one out just so the spacing is sort of consistent around the edge. If we want that, we have to actually consider the fact that these two aren't planar. So maybe we select all these. Let me rotate it so it's a little bit more in line. There we go. We're starting to get this shape that's actually quite, it's quite workable. We can select this edge and slide it down. So if anyone's ever wondered why some of my models take hours and hours and hours to complete, this is probably why I'm pretty meticulous about this kind of stuff. So there we go. I do notice that there's some extra geometry on these actual eyelets. But I'm going to leave those alone for now. Actually, let's take care of them. So let's just select each of these stars, stars of edges. That's, I'm not sure that's a term. That's just what I say. And we're just going to melt them all. Now we have the opportunity to quadrangulate these. So I know that these go straight top to bottom. They both have one on top. 
When I say one, I mean a point of geometry and one on the bottom. So let's start there. Using the knife tool, visible only, I'm going to cut along the surface there, cut along the surface here, do the same here, and there. Okay, so they've been subdivided. Now we see that we can actually cut there and there to get two more quads. Okay, so let's do that to all of them. It doesn't have to be perfect. This geometry is all sort of um, planar, so it doesn't matter what it looks like here as long as it stays on the same plane. In fact, it's usually better if it curves a little bit. I mean, you could go straight across like that. It just doesn't really give you an advantage, in my opinion. Not in this circumstance. Okay. Okay, so we have some leftover stuff. Basically, it looks like we have some extra edges. But we need those edges because they flow up here. They're actually useful. Where are they? For now, I'm going to say they are useful. And let's just do something kind of cheap. Let's just terminate them. However, this is one of those nice moments that comes when you're trying to get rid of triangles where you realize, wait a minute, I've actually just gotten rid of the triangles. For instance, there's no triangles here. There's one triangle here, but it actually doesn't have to be a triangle. I can melt that edge. I can do the same here and here. And that works. The only problem is when you have two sides of a quad straight along like this, it's not very good. So, what if there was a slight concave there? That would work. But it's kind of a pointless exercise at this point. So I'm going to leave those triangles in. If we do need to get rid of those triangles at a later date, we can. Now, it might be interesting to figure out why this one doesn't have the triangles and these do. Well, it's pretty simple. It's because of these edges here. So, what would happen if we were to take all the edges associated with this triangle and just get rid of them? So we select all those edges and we melt. We probably need to get rid of the points too. But I mean, once we do that, we haven't really changed the geometry. We've actually cleaned it up. You've simplified it. And at that point, it's good to go. The problem comes in here. If we want to select these edges, we need to follow them to where they lead, which might not be a bad thing because they lead to a star, which means there might be something we can do about it. I'm going to use the path selection tool. So I can just hold shift and drag and I get my path. So if we melted all these edges. Isn't there a dissolve command? Yes, you can dissolve and it melts and then deletes the points too. Right, so we, we dissolve all those edges. Hey, where did this come from? Is that always there? Yeah, I guess so. Okay, I'll deal with that in a bit. What I'm seeing here is I'm seeing that we thought we had a quad here, but it doesn't seem... Oh, you know what? I think a point got added here accidentally. We can just delete that. And then fill this hole. Okay. So now we have geometry that sort of goes everywhere, but we might be able to afford to get rid of some of this. What happens if we melt these two edges? Well, we get two quads. But these quads connect two triangles. We probably want to keep this star because it has a lot of structure. But I would argue that having triangles back here where no one can see them 
is a hell of a lot better than having them on the other side where everyone can see them. Now here's a trick to get rid of triangles in this situation. First thing we do is we remove the end gongs. So we have triangle, quad, quad, triangle. The easiest way to get rid of these triangles is to simply cut the quads in half. What we've done there, I'm going to use the slide tool, is we've taken triangles on the edge and turned them into quads. So even though I didn't set out to make this all quads, I was able to uh, sort of preserve the fact that it's all quads and work to keep that all quads. Now there, there may be a few triangles in here still, but we can get rid of those. For instance, if you select the triangles on a star like this, as long as it has even number of rotation segments, so that's why I was like 12, 16, 10, 8, and then you just melt those. Now this object is all quads. Why is that important? Well, if we wanted to, we could add it to a hypernerbs object, beef up some edges, and all of a sudden it's a smooth object. The basic idea is that it's going to play nicely with us later on when we want to add more detail. So let's just call this object um, kickstand bracket. I'm going to cut and then paste right here. Now we have sort of a bracket for our kickstands. And for style reasons, we probably want to select all these and scale it in a little bit. Move it up. adds a lot of depth to it when we start to make an effort to augment it. So that's the cube, this is the pivot, that's what I was looking for. So this would come out and maybe we'd put a nice big bolt on the end of the shaft. What we've got now, I'm going to tweak the font smoothing on this. 60 should be good. That's my go to smoothing. But now we have hard edges here. We don't want those hard edges. So let's select one, two, three, four. And I still have it in normal mode. I'm not sure I trust the orientation of this axis, but let's say maybe I trust it enough. Yeah, it looks pretty flat. So that means that we can go along the Z until we get that smoothing back. I don't like it. There we go. So it smooths around the edges of the brackets, but not onto the hard edge. We're probably going to, you know, clean this up a lot. But for now, that's fine. We did say that they would sort of have bolts to, to clamp. We can add those in later. For instance, you could simply select these four faces on either side. And we use the extrude command. Pull them out like that. And once they're out, you can move it down like that a little bit. Now I'm just doing this really quick and dirty. And then maybe you would, uh, let's see, maybe you would select the edges like that and bevel them so you get a nice smooth area and you just put a couple of bolts in there so we can we can augment this further later on 
But for now, let's keep it simple. We don't want to add a bunch of detail to something that's going to be hidden or something that we don't really care about that much. Cool. So, kickstands. This is this is kind of a big deal. We're we're staying pretty much in line with our sketch, which is nice. We have a uh, we have the blades. We have these kickstands. Granted, in my sketch, they're all the way up here, but in reality, back here is a better position for them. The shock absorber still needs to be relocated, but we can we can move that at some point. And if we look at the actual kickstand pivot, we can move that up. We can move the kickstand up, and then when the time comes, we can put it back down and extend them. So if the kickstand were to extend to its full ability, it looks like that would move the bike up to about that. That looks pretty cool. Just to get an idea. pretty menacing. You know what, while, while we're modeling, I'm going to leave those extended. I think it'll give me more opportunity to think about them, to think about whether those are the right objects. And we can also, you can also do like what real kickstands do and orient them so that when they hit the ground they hit flush. Bam. Not sure if that's something we're gonna want to do. Gives it sort of the outrigger look. But I think that's it for this video. We made some good progress. We were able to uh, look at this object here and sort of flesh it out. Conceptualize what it needs to look like. Still getting some weird font stuff here, so I'm just going to manually move one of these edges. Let's see. What would I have to do? I see. One side of it. Just sort of tweaking this. This fong smoothing is bothering me a bit. Yeah, it doesn't look like I'm gonna get that to go away. So we can just leave it alone. Excellent. All right, so as usual, let me know what you thought of the video and until next time, see you.